And now what do we got? Okay, next step is we have a do together. So I want two things to happen at the same time. Down here at the bottom, zoom in again, I have beside my do in order block, I have a do together block. Okay, and that's going to get things to happen at the same time. So everything I put in this block is going to happen together. All right. What do I want to do together? I want to have the robot move towards the alien, and I want the robot's legs to walk. So the robot's already facing the alien because that happened in the previous step. So all I want need to have is the robot to move forward. So I'm going to have the robot move. Drag that in there. I want it to move forward, and we're going to select uh, one meter to have it move. Well, take a close look at this. What, yeah, one meter. We'll go with one meter. That looks good. Okay. And then at the same time, I want the robots. Well, let's see how this works. We'll push the play button, see how this goes. There's the alien. Robot's head turns around. Robot turns the face and moves forward one meter. That's all working pretty good. Okay. Now I want the legs to move. Now, to be honest, this is going to take a lot of playing around in real life, but the textbook has it all kind of played for us. When you do this in your own, you're going to have to do a lot of playing around and seeing what kind of works. But let's, we're just going to follow the instructions on the textbook. And the textbook says to go to the back left upper leg joint. So we've got to go to the body, back left, uh, back left leg. and the back left upper leg joint. So we want to make sure we have that selected just what we want. And there we have the back left upper leg joint. Okay. And we want that piece to turn. Oh, yeah, let's save right now. That's a good idea. Let's get that piece to turn. And it's going to turn by our instructions forward. And I want to pick not one of these ones, but another one. I want it to turn 0.1 of a revolution say OK. And then what I want it to do is I want it to turn back again to its original position. So the same object, the back left upper leg joint, is going to turn. It's going to turn backwards now. And again, that same distance, 0.1 revolution. And what I also want to do is I want to do the same thing with the front right leg upper joint, upper <laughs> front, ah, can't even say it, uh, front right leg. So I go to front right leg base, front right leg, upper leg joint, same instructions. I want it to move, or I want it to turn forward, 0.1 revolution, and then that same thing, I want it to turn backwards, 0.1 revolution. There we go. All right. Let's see how this looks. So we're going to press our play button, and I'm going to want to zoom right in here so we can really get a good look at the scene. So here we go. Alien turns, goes like that. And what happened? This is what happens sometimes when you test, right? Um, it looked like nothing happening. Let me turn and push the restart button. We'll look at this really carefully. Sometimes when you test, you get things that are, do you notice the legs don't seem to move? So what happened here? This is where the puzzling part comes in. The thing about computers is computers, well, they're quite frankly pretty dumb. They're just machines, and they do exactly what you say to do. And look what we said to do down here. In our do together block, we said for the uh, back left leg upper joint to turn at the same time, both forwards and backwards, the same distance. And it does it at the same time. Well, if I tell you to go both forwards and backwards at the same time, the result's going to be you're not going to do anything at all. And that's going to happen in your programming. You're going to all of a sudden find, oh my gosh, that didn't work the way I wanted to. So what do I want it to do? I don't want them to do those at the same time. I want to do those in a specific order. So first, I'm going to put a do in order. I want the leg to go forward. And then, in a separate do in order, I want it to go back again. Okay. And similarly, with the right upper leg joint, I want it first to go forward. Wait a minute. Sorry, I want these two to be together. There we go. So first to go for, uh, forward, and then to go backwards, and then with the other leg joint, same dealy. I want it first to go forward. So these steps I want to do in order. Notice that these two do in orders are in a do together, so it's going to do this do in order and this do in order at the same time. In other words, both legs are going to be moving at the same time. So let's push the play button again. All right. 
And we got some motion happening with the legs. And that didn't look so bad, I thought. There we go. Okay. The one thing that I don't like, though, is notice that the robot stops, but the legs are still going. And that's because each of these steps have a specific, what we call a duration, amount of time that it takes for them to do. And the default is for it to do it in one second. So it's going to take the robot one second to move forward one meter. But then it takes one second to do each of these leg movements. So in other words, this takes one second to move the leg forward. This takes one second to move the leg backwards. So these two steps together are going to take two seconds, while the robot's only going to move for one second. So they're out of sync. That's why the leg motion and the movement of the robot are out of sync with each other. So we need to make them the same. Either we need to make the move forward take um, two seconds, or we need each of these steps to take half a second. I'm going to make each of these steps to take half a second rather than to take a second, so they add up to the one second move. And to get more arguments, you just click the more little triangle down here. Zoom in. Okay, click more. And I want to expect the duration. And I want the duration to not be one second, but to be half a second. And I need to do that with each of these. So I'll do this real quick. Duration to be half a second. Duration to be half a second. And duration to be half a second. Okay, zoom out. We're going to push the play button again. I'll zoom in real fast here. Here we go. And we'll watch those legs. Ah, uh, now everything's in sync. That worked pretty good. We'll do it one more time so you can see it. But watch the legs in particular. Right? Now the motion of the robot and the motion of the legs, they begin and start together. Perfect. All right. All right, let's go back to our storyboard. We've done the most complicated part of this. So we're going to go back to our storyboard. We've got the robot legs to move. Now we need the alien to move back down. We need the robot to turn and look at the camera. We need the robot's head to turn red. And finally, we need the robot to say, Houston, we have a problem. So let's do all those things really, really quickly. So first step, alien moves down. So go back to here. We need to select the alien on wheels. We want the whole alien. We want the alien to move down. So we're going to drag that after the whole do and order business. We want it to move down one meter. Boom. Done. Okay. Uh, notice how where it is. It's after the do all of this stuff, right? After the whole robot moves and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, what's next? We want the robot to turn to look at the camera. Okay, so we need to select the whole robot. And we need it to turn, but we don't want to, we want it to turn towards the, something specific. So we have a turn to face, that's the method we're going to use. Drag that in, and we want to turn to face the camera. Boom. We want then the robot's head to turn red, so we're going to select spider robot head. And turning color, that's none under, you can look through all the methods, there's nothing in there about color, because color's not a method. Color's not something the robot does. It's a property of the robot. It's something about the robot you want to change, and that's under a different tab. So next to the Methods tab, we have the Properties tab. We want to change that. And these are all things you can change about the robot. We'll be talking about a lot of these later on, but the very first one is the color. That's the one I want. I want to change the color of the robot's head. Do I have the head select? Yes. So robot head, I want to change it to red. That's the argument I want. So there we go. It says robot, neck head. We want to turn it to red. And then finally, we want the robot to say, Houston, we have a problem. And again, this is the whole robot. So I go back to selecting the whole robot. Saying something is a method, it's something the robot does. We find the say method, and we say, well, we don't want to say hello, we don't want to say goodbye, we don't want to say sliffy toes, we want to say something else, so we're going to say, Houston, we have a problem. Okay. All right, let's run this whole thing and see how this works. So we're going to go to the push the play button, and here we go, here's our whole show. Robot turns the camera, turns red, says, Houston, we have a problem. So we got everything we wanted to do. Feel free to go in there and, by the way, play some things. For instance, I noticed I had trouble reading that Houston, we have a problem. So I'm going to change the Houston, we have a problem duration. Push the more button, say duration. I want it to last for two seconds so we have a little bit more time to read that. Okay. 
also notice that uh, only two of the legs of the five legs that the robot has uh, are moving. You you can go in there and feel free to play around and adjust that as well. But what I want to do, and this is the last thing I want to show you, is I want to insert some comments about what's going on. I mean, this is a lot of code, and somebody looks at this and it looks very confusing. So get in the habit of adding in some comments, and you'll find the comments down here at the bottom, way over on the right, this little thing with the two green slashes. So I'm going to drag that up to the very beginning. Okay, I'm going to put that before my very first line. Right now there's no comment, so I want to adjust this. I don't want to write in what it is that we're doing. We're going to having a spider robot encounters an alien on a distant moon. And it's always a good idea to include comments. You actually can't include enough comments to explain what's going on in your program, especially if you plan on working on it over a few days, because it's easy to sort of lose track. What the heck am I doing? So that's what comments are for. You don't have to go in there, figure out the code, figure out what's going on. It describes it. Also, when you get to complicated parts of the programs, like for instance this part, it's pretty complicated with the legs moving and all that kind of stuff. So for that part, I'm going to put in a comment there as well right ahead in the beginning of that do together block and I'm gonna say spider robot moves forward and as its legs walk so now instead of this being complex this describes what's going on so I know what's happening in this do together block okay that concludes this so your job is to do this precisely submit to me the file that you end up with at the end